So you might be wondering, Jack, why why are there Christmas decorations up? It's the playoff fight. Look, I get, I get that, but it's like my grandma used to say, it's always Christmas somewhere in the world. Or, or was that daytime? I can't really remember. Either way, Crouchy, look, he, he gave me a lovely book to read over Christmas, and I've got a new phone, and it has this feature, which I, I think it's quite... I don't think it's caught on yet. It's called uh, an answer machine, so people can, like, leave you messages. Oh, I've got on it. David's left us a message from Boston. How nice is this? Hey, Jack. It's your old pal David oh, here. D-Dog, remember me? Never forget Chairman him. of National League Champions, Boston United. Champion. That's well, well right. Done, mate. Well done. That's me. That's us. Mm. Champions. How good does that sound? Sounds good. No thanks to you, of course. And the reason you're bloody going up, you cheeky bugger. I just to wish you and Lincoln the best of luck with the game today. I can't wait. I generally cannot wait to watch your heartbreak live on TV when you bottle it again. See you next season, sucker. <laughs> sucker? I didn't know I was expecting words of encouragement. It's, it's like my Christmas right now, and he's just ruining it. I'm not calling him back. I'm not... Let's win this blooming game. I don't want to take on Boston next year. David, he used to be so nice. He used to be... At least I've got Crouchy. At least I've got Crouchy. What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 6 of Park to Prem here with Lincoln City. Today is the end of our first season here at the club. We've only been here 6 months but my oh my how time has flown by and well as you might be able to tell by the green screen it's quite a big occasion today. It's the playoff final. I felt like this was the perfect opportunity to watch me cry if we lose or pump the air when we win. When when we win, not if we win, when we... I'm confident. I'm feeling good. Of course, the Imps, that being Lincoln City, got their demons to take on head-on today because just last season, they lost to Cambridge in this exact fixture at Wembley. And well... For myself personally, it's not exactly a happy hunting ground. During our time at Boston United, we went to Wembley twice. On one occasion, we did get promoted. Or not promoted, we didn't. We didn't get promoted, everyone. On one occasion, we did hoist a trophy, although it was the FA Trophy. And of course, there was that playoff final against Solihull Moors, that game where things just didn't really get going, sadly. Now, of course, Boston are on the verge of promotion this year. In fact, they are promoted. They're coming up to League Two. The question is, can we escape without having to face them? Or are we destined for another year in League Two? I think for both my own sake and for the club's sake, I'm hoping it's going to be a case of getting out of the division today because I think we deserve it. I genuinely feel like since I've come to the club, we've done some really, really good stuff. And whilst, you know what, the fixtures, the form, it's not been flawless throughout. I think we've shown that we've turned a corner and we've played some entertaining football, scoring a lot of goals, also conceding a lot of goals. Uh, yeah, it's not been perfect by any means. Of course, the last playoff final that Lincoln lost, it finished 1-0 to Cambridge. I'm suspecting there's going to be more goals today. In terms of our team, just to look at things here, we're pretty much at full strength, which is absolutely superb. It means that I can really go with the team that I want to go with, and that is this team here. Um, yeah, we've got coming in goal, we've got Cons and Quanza at the back, Ruffin and Brown in the fullback areas, and then the midfield is going to be White and Finney. Of course, these are two players who were here when I came to the club, two players who I really feel like we've been able to build a system around. Um, when I was at Boston playing the 4-4-2 system, the wingers sat deeper and so they'd help out a lot more defensively. I will say now that Finney and White are having a lot asked of them in terms of what they have to contribute in this system. They've done it all absolutely superbly. So if there's players that need to step up, if there's players that you kind of look at and go, if they turn up, we will win. I do look at those two guys in midfield. I think they've been really, really top draw. The great news is, of course, Richards is coming back from injury. He, he is one of the signings that's really had an impact since he came into the club and started playing out on the left-hand side. Out on the right, we've got Olamola. Up front, Fahl. A guy who I've doubted, I questioned. I wasn't sure if he was going to be good enough. I was informed that his name in Dutch was Fail. And Fail, well, he hasn't, has he? He's not failed. He's got 27 goals. He's got an XG of 18. He is so clinical. He's taken so many chances. 
there's just one more game I need him to turn up for today. How, how hard can it be for him? And of course, up, up, up top alongside him, we've got Thomas. For the first half of the season prior to our arrival, Thal had to shoulder the whole responsibility. And between the likes of Glatzel, Cooper and Josh Thomas, we brought in reinforcements, players who could play in the attacking areas. And I think of all of them, Thomas has had the biggest impact. Seven goals in 12 starts. Really, really good form. You know, he's a younger player, not played a whole lot of first team football, really. You can see a handful of loan appearances, uh, well, not loan appearances, but sub appearances uh, for Swansea City. He's had a chance here. He's really taken it. If he is not going to play for us anymore, this is going to be his final game. You know, if we can't renew his loan, let's make it a memorable one for his sakes. Uh, in terms of our opposition, it's AFC Wimbledon we're taking on, a team whom themselves, much like Lincoln, have been in League One in recent years. If we just look at their form, you can see here they were actually relegated just last season, finishing 22nd. Their pre-season billing was first place. They fell massively short of that, scraped into the playoffs, but they absolutely smashed Man field away from home and they've got some good players they've got the likes of Hayden Muller who is a very very good defender for this level on loan from Birmingham up front Stockley is a man we need to be wary of he's got 20 goals in 46 games in on loan from Luton he looks really good but doesn't like big matches it's going to be a big match day today uh, I feel like you know uh, when you have fixtures like this sometimes it just comes down to whose team turns up the most and uh, I, that could well be what it turns down to. And the fact that Stockley, their top goal scorer, isn't a big fan of big games, does it, it gives me a little bit of hope. I say that. They just, they've just scored five goals against a team in the semi-final, so anything could happen. But no, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic, but this is not an easy game by any means. Despite Wimbledon's league standing, they probably go into this fame, uh, game as the marginal favourites. Um... So, with that in mind, am I going to play defence? No, I'm not going to play defence. Why would I even suggest that question? No, we're playing on the front foot today, everyone. We're going on the attack, and um, hopefully we're going to have a good game. Now, I realise that there's going to be some people sat thinking, Jack, you are not wearing a suit for a cup final. Are you really a football manager player? Look, I have not worn a suit since Gibraltar Apex, and if you don't know about Gibraltar Apex, it was a Let's Play we did on, I think, FM 15 or 16? I went to two Champions Leagues in a row wearing a suit and lost them both. And then I stopped wearing the suits and then we won. So now I'm just anti-suit. I'm a tracksuit manager, everyone. I'm a tracksuit manager without the tracksuit. So I'm just, just a manager. Anyway, looking at our team, we're going to play our 4-4-2. You can see our recent form here. It has been a little bit patchy, but we did look good against Doncaster. As for AFC Wimbledon, they've not lost in their last five. And of course, they've got that scintillating win which is, I'm sure, going to be carrying them into this fixture, giving them some hope and giving them some confidence. We're playing at Wembley. I can't say it's packed. That would be a bit of an exaggeration, but hopefully we're going to turn up here. League 2 playoff finals. The aim this year was to get here. Let's see if we can go that one step further. And we're off the bat. Ball played forward towards Thomas. Cleared away, and now Stockley, who's definitely going to be the, the target man for Wimbledon. He is really, really good in the air. We've got to be wary f with him from set pieces. Hopefully, Quantz is going to be able to shut him down. And, uh, well, Chapman, cutting in from the left-hand side, goes all the way and does absolutely nothing. What a, what a weird start to the game. You can see here, just looking at the average positions, they are playing a 4-4-2 of their own, and it looks like Harter Hartigan is playing a really defensive role for them, shielding the defence. Our 4-4-2 is a little more kind of balanced. We don't have one midfielder who does all the sitting, which can sometimes be to our detriment, but it definitely gives us a little bit more lethality going forward. Ball forward to Fahl here. Olamola plays it to Thomas. Back inside. Richards is there. What a beautiful goal. Taylor Richards in off the left-hand side. He was released by Man City. He went to Brighton. He was released by Brighton. Went six months without a job. We came in and said, you know what? We know you're a centre mid. I want to play you on the left wing. He bought into it, and this is why. Look at that. Cuts inside. Really unselfish as well by Thomas, which is great to see. I would love to have Thomas on loan for another year, be it in League 2 or League 1. I feel like he really is just such a good striker for this level. So with half an hour gone, we've been the better team in this game. They've not really had many opportunities. They've had well their fair share of possession. They've actually edged possession inside the first 40 minutes. But for now... We remain a goal ahead, and they've not really shown anything going forward yet, Wimbledon. I say that. We've given the ball away now to Delhi Bashiru, who I think is a former... Is he another former Man City man? We've got a lot of former Man City players on the pitch, it turns out, today. 
Anyway, rough into cons. Lumps it forward. I mean, that is ambitious at best. Stockley wins those in the air as well. We've got to be in... Tr well... Breathe. I was about to say we need to be wary here. It's nearly gone in. They've now got a corner. I don't like this. Farl heads it away. Only as far as Hartigan, though. Second ball needs to be dealt with here. What can we do? O'Neill to Chapman. Lovely ball through. Chapman hits it. Chapman scores. But the linesman holds up his flag. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Linesman. That was a let off. We looked a bit all over the place there. But at half time, it's 1 0. That one golden opportunity we took. And since then, there have been a few chances for either team. But you know what? Neva's ended up in the back of the net. Going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. Pretty good reaction on the whole. Um, I feel like we've been. We've been good in this game. We've not been bad, but we're not running away with it. And I can definitely see a way in which AFC Wimbledon get into this game. I was about to shout demand more, but no. Change of heart. Go go encourage. I am a little bit scared by the amount of bookings we have at the back. James Brown has not had the best game. I'm actually going to bring in Mo Adams. Mo Adams has had an extended run at right back over the season um, when Brown was injured. So he's very familiar with the position. I think, you know, for Brown, he's not really hit the ground running since he's come back from injury. He's on a booking. Let's not do anything too risky here. I say that. Ball over Stockley. Hates big matches. Doesn't hate this big match, though. What, where was our defence there? That is a... Did we try and play an offside trap there really badly? What what was going on? Where Where is Adams, the right back? Where, where are you? Adams is there. So what happens here... I mean, there's two men over at the far post, and Adams doesn't pick up either of them. I mean, is that I maybe I should shoulder some responsibility for bringing Adams on, but across the board there, defensively, we didn't look very good. Just wondering how I want to change things here. Both teams are playing pretty narrow. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just try and stretch the play a little wider here. We're going to lower the tempo slightly, just try and get our fullbacks slightly higher up the pitch more frequently. Maybe just try and get a little bit more of the ball as well. Let's not rush it forward. Anyway, 17 minutes left. We're getting to that nervy time. Perhaps need to look at making some subs in the final third. Glatzel may need to get warmed up. But there is a highlight here and we are in possession. Um, now, now we're not, everyone. We're giving away the ball immediately. Adams, don't do anything stupid at right back, Adams. I've brought you in. I've shown faith in you on off the bench. Don't let me down. What I will say is AFC Wimbledon look very, very good in this game. They are the favourites. They've, you know, fought back well since they well, were down at half time. They've looked better in this half. But we have the ability to break. And if they come on the front foot, if they look to attack, I think that's one of the areas where we can really shine. The way in which we get in behind teams is they give away the ball. White foul. Thomas looked offside there. He is offside there. Just went slightly too early with his run. I'm going to make some changes here. And I know it's harsh because Fahl is our top goal scorer. Not having a good game. I am going to be bold here. I'm going to bring in Paul Glatzel, who I do really, really like. I'm actually going to play him as the advanced forward. I feel like this is the role to play him in, advanced forward. He's really well suited to it. I'm so disappointed he's not put in better performances. But if there's a time to turn around your fortunes, it might be this one. And it might be an unpopular decision to take off the top goal scorer. But he's not had a good game. And I do. I, I feel like sometimes you've got to put faith in the kids. I mean, Glatzel, please don't miss any one-on-ones or I will be upset here. Anyway, Bashiru playing the ball forward to Chapman out on this far side. Adams makes one tackle, plays it inside. Never across your own line, Adams. What are you doing? You get taught that in preschool. If you've ever played football, ever, and I'm assuming most of you watching have played football, you never pass it along your own line like that. That is like, that is like one of the first things you're taught as a child. Um, that is beyond frustrating. Right. I mean, looking at the midfield, Finney's not had a good game, so let's bring in YOLO, because we only live once. I'm going to change him on to support as well. We've got to... Oh, we've got to play a bit more on the front foot here, haven't we? We've got to be a bit more attacking. There's six minutes left. I've got to go on. I've got to go on the attack. Are we about to have heartbreak in the playoff final again? I don't know if I could handle it, everyone. I'm I'm not going to wake up in a cold sweat at night worrying about well about this kind of fixture about these um kind of playoff games. <sighs> right, we have to play the ball forward a bit quicker now, don't we? Sadly, I'm thinking more so in terms of how we distribute the ball, kick it long, 
distribute to the wings, counter, counter press, out of possession. We can't sit back. Our game plan is usually to sit back and then hit teams on the break. Can't afford to do that here. We are going to get stuck in, prevent the goalkeeper distributing it short. Oh, we've got to go for... There's no time. There is no... I'm going to go very attacking and then just shout demand more, but... Great first half, second half, Wimbledon just adapted. They didn't change their system. They didn't change anything. Their players just started performing. Oh, I hate playoff finals so much. I hate them so much. The way in which we've lost that is actually gutting, I've got to say. Adams. Adams, Adams, Adams. Adams. I don't know. Saying his name repeatedly isn't solving the issue. You could argue he was at fault for both the goals as well, which just makes it an even bitter, more bitter blow. I'm gonna throw a bottle. And it's unacceptable. Oh, I know you can make the argument I shouldn't have played Adams, but the right back was on a six point one coming back from injury, and on a booking like it was. And Adams has played right back. It's just he's crapped in his bed in the moment that mattered the most. A comeback win. Back-to-back -back playoff final defeats for both me and for Lincoln. The only silver lining I can find is, well, at, le at least we get to play Boston next year. But honestly, that's not really a silver lining. That doesn't make me feel that much better. And I know there'll be some people who say, oh, you're just saying that because you get to... No, genuinely, I hate losing playoff finals. I hate losing in Football Manager in general. But when you work for an entire season, especially a season like this where we were... I feel like me as a manager has done great. If I was in charge for the whole year, I think we probably would have got automatic promotion. So to have that kind of six months of great work completely undone by a single game, it's impossible not to feel just a little gutted about it, to be frank. Anyway, we can go straight into the end of season stuff because I've learnt through trial and error that the end of season review bit pops up um, kind of after the last game of the season. So we can go straight into the end of season segment for this end of season live com if the game will let us. So, new arrivals. These are the players that we signed. Of course, a lot of these were signed by me, although some of these players... Do some of these players predate me? Yeah, they do. A few a few, a few of these do predate me, uh, predate me like Ben Winter. But in terms of average rating, the big performers, Josh, Thomas and Richards, they linked up in the playoff final. Two players who have looked very, very good. Obviously, coming as well. Make no mistake, to come in halfway through a season and be thrown in at the deep end after Miazek failed to get a work permit and then agreed to move to Olympiakos is great. He's looked top quality at this level. He's got one more year left on his current contract. I think it's kind of obvious. I would quite like to extend his contract because to me, he looks like a goalkeeper good enough for you know to play above this level. You can see in terms of our transfers, Thomas got an A+. Taylor Richards got a C+. I mean, all of these dealings were judged quite well, I guess because we didn't spend a huge amount of money. And of course, some of these signings lower down are players that I didn't bring in. A few of the Boston boys. Cooper's come in and got a B, which is great. And YOLO got a C in the end. In terms of the season results, I mean, this is how the league table finished. Look, the board expectation was to reach the playoffs. And let's just remember, I joined the club, I think, 22 games into the season, and the team were down in 12th. They had just won a game. I think prior to that, they'd been down in kind of 13th or 14th. So uh, to end up finishing fifth is superb. To finish 10 points off the automatic promotion spots kind of makes me feel like next year we should be up there. Of course, one of the things that makes League 2 weird, and I'm not there must be a historical reason. I've never really thought about it. League 2 to League 1, there are four teams promoted. In the rest of the English leagues, it's, you know, in, at least in the Football League, it's three teams promoted, two automatically, one via the playoffs. But um, no, free automatic promotion spots, that is undoubtedly what we will be targeting next year. You can see in terms of the form the team had, they started the season pretty well. And then they went in this awful run of form. I mean, look at that. Obviously, we joined at the, for the game against Northampton. Well, when you look beyond that, we lost, what, f six games across the rest of the season. One, of course, being the one game that mattered, the playoff final. But, but it's, a, it's a good season. It's a good season. We can definitely build off it. Uh, match to remember was actually a 4 3 home win against AFC Wimbledon, um, which was in October. That was, but before I was there, everyone, the moment to um, remember. The best match as well and the biggest win wasn't there for that either. And, uh, well, the be best goal was Finney against Salford, which I feel like I showed, but I don't remember. I don't, rem I don't remember this goal. Uh, is there a way that I can view the goal, Finney? Can, can we watch Finney's goal? Is it actually going to work? 
Let's let's find out. The suspense is killing me. Can, can we watch the goal, football manager? It's it's loading something. What was this goal of the season? So Isaac with the ball in, headed away, and then Finney picks it up. Back to Isaac. Must give it back to Finney. I mean, it's a it's a it's a nice goal. I feel like we score better goals than that. I feel like goal of the season is always weird in football manager. Also, whenever you click off the screen during the end of season bit, it goes back to the start. Football ma football manager, please fix. Financially, things are looking pretty good, I think. Like, we're selling shirts. Actually, interesting to note that Forster Kasky sold a lot of shirts. That feels really weird. I guess he just has a really high rep. I feel like the shirt sales in FM21 are a little bit funky. Has anyone else noticed that? Is that just me? Um, obviously, finances this year are a bit weird compared to the previous season because um, the team's been in League 2 for a couple of years now. You know, the finances are going to start to level out. In terms of how we lined up, this is the system that I played the most often. Glatzel's average ratings really aren't very good. I'm I'm disappointed with Glatzel. It's kind of fortunate that we brought in Josh um, Thomas as well. I feel like when you compare the two of them, they're two not dissimilar players. You know, Glatzel's a bit quicker, bit of a better finisher. I thought that might mean that he would be the man getting the goals for us. But no, Josh Thomas in the end was the difference maker. I need to not click off the screen, don't I? You can see here the rest of the team. Uh, interesting to note that Kwanzaa isn't in our how we lined up centre-back setup. I guess this is, might be partially down um, to the fact I joined halfway through the season. It wouldn't surprise me if that does some weird stuff. Anyway, I won no manager awards. I did, I won, so that's a bit sad. But what I will say is Fal set the record for most goals by a player in a season. And Kwanzaa became Lincoln City's most expensive signing. I think he did okay. He didn't, he didn't you know, do insanely. He didn't completely blow my mind. But we had some money to spend. And he got a lot of goals for us. He did what we brought him in to do. Fans player of the season was Fal. Young player of the season was Hayden Can, who I think after I took over really didn't play that much anymore. So maybe I should feel guilty about that. Um, we've already talked about Finney's goal of the season. Taylor Richards won signing of the season out on the left-hand side of midfield, which is kind of interesting to see. And, uh, well, Fahl got the golden boot and player of the year in League 2, which I'm still not sure quite how he's managed that. Anyway, there's this overall best 11, but it's just full of players I don't know, so we'll just pretend that doesn't exist. Um, in terms of the end-of-season review, we can be satisfied with our season's work as we met expectations and did what was expected of us. I mean, the dismal spell between October and December, that was right before we came in. They only won one or two games. Lowest position of 18th. We bounced back and we achieved the prediction that was being tipped towards us at the start of the season. You can see here the kind of uh, data analyst stuff. We are aggressive and clinical, everyone. We take chances. We create chances. That is something we do. I think the big issue maybe to try and solve over the uh, the transfer window upcoming is going to be not being busy and leaky. Although, I don't necessarily mind the attitude of, we'll just score more than the opposition. As far as I'm concerned, that, that if it works, it works. I'm totally fine with it. Anyway, club vision and expectations going forward for the upcoming year. They want playoffs again. They want to sign players to sell for profit. Make the most of set pieces. Develop players using the club's youth system. Not been able to do that too much so far, but we've obviously got a few youngsters coming in, which is going to be exciting. And uh, for the end of the season, after next one, they want automatic promotion to League One. I'm going to be honest, that is what I'm going to be targeting this season. I feel like that should be the minimum expectation, especially after the time we've had in charge of the club. Anyway, in terms of squad dynamics, Miazek, congratulations, you're a team leader, you're buggering off, you're irrelevant, but Brown and Cons leading the way in terms of the hierarchy. If we look at things here, James Brown, of course, the right back who I subbed off in the final. Oh, why did I sub him off? Why did I sub him off? And Adams, you, Adams might not be here next season, everyone. I'm, I'm quite bitter and emotional at the moment, but I'm considering his future quite carefully. Um, what is interesting to note, actually, is that a lot of the players who are the more influential ones are the better players that were already here before I joined, which is quite good. If you take over a club and the team that you take over, their best players are all really, really crap and you need to replace them, it can cause all kinds of havoc with the hierarchy, but I don't think that is something we're going to have to worry about. Anyway, I'm going to discuss plans with the team for next year, and I'm going to say automatic promotion. I'm going to say automatically, they, they don't think they're good enough. All right, let's go to the playoffs then. Is that better? I feel, oh, I want automatic promotion, even if the players don't. I'm going to make some promises. Uh, I want to, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? 
I want to give opportunities to more younger players this season. Beautiful. That's enough promises for now. I'll see you at the start of next season. Look at everyone's happy except Mark Cooper. Why are you like this, Mark? Why are you like this? It's because he's not scored. I'm unhappy with him. He's unhappy with me. It's a beautiful relationship. Anyway, you can see here our team report in terms of the, what could be considered the best 11. It's actually a little different to how I've set things up. But of course, at this lower level of things, the kind of the star ratings are kind of a load of rubbish. You can use them as a guideline, but sometimes your own intuition needs to take hold. It's going to be very interesting to see where the media think we're going to finish next season. You can see File here winning all the awards. And in the team of the year... He also appeared up front. Kind of interesting to note Rochdale doing very well. Do they have Noan Kenne playing for them? Wow. I mean, the fact that he was playing for the team who finished top is mad because he's an absolutely insane player and football manager. I mean, I can't believe Leeds are just loading him out. Maybe we can... Mate, can we, lo can we loan him? Oh, I can't loan him yet. Can I sign him? I don't, I don't have 20 million. Don't have 20... The fact he's there is nuts. That is... I can see why Rochdale topped the league. But yeah, as I said, it's it's weird, right, going into this season because I'm not this kind of upcoming season. I don't know where the media are going to predict us to finish. We had such a weird season this year in terms of, well, coming in halfway through. I feel like we, you know, found our feet quite quickly. Sometimes when you take over a club, it can take a little while to figure things out and really get the momentum going. But because we joined and the team had already won just one game, it worked out quite nicely. You can see here that we're actually going to be upgrading our youth setup to Category 2, which is really good. That will hopefully help with the club's longer-term vision um, you know, to develop players using the club's youth system. So I guess the question is, what am I going to be changing here at the team? Who, who survives and who goes in this starting eleven? And the, the honest truth is, I don't think I need to change a lot. I don't think this is going to be a summer transfer window where I sign a load of players. And I know some of you are rolling your eyes at that thinking he said this before and then he signs 20 players. I think that given how the second half of the season went, given the fact we got to the playoff final, like maybe a few new people at fullback, maybe a bit, you know, in the way of new personnel in the defence. But generally, I don't, I don't see the benefit of massively overhauling things. and Maybe that's mad, because I feel like we almost did a mini overhaul in January anyway. I mean, if we just look at our January transfer business here, kind of after I took over, we signed, what, uh, nine new players for the first team? And I think they've all featured at some point in the first team as well. That was essentially our first summer transfer window there, and we performed off the back of it and so it kind of alleviates any pressure to continue to improve of course we have got a few players coming and going Miyazek, who never really played for us because he didn't have a work permit is leaving to go to olympiakos on the ends we've got gary garbert joining us from manchester united i mean the thing with a lot of these players is they are younger prospects for the future callum green is an interesting one i need to find a way to integrate him into the first team uh, defend, depending on how the summer goes, I might look at changing the system um, to facilitate Green. You know, he could easily slot in at centre mid, but maybe we play a 4-2-3-1. Maybe we stray away from our kind of roots and what we've done well at Boston and at Lincoln in our first four years at management. You know, we've had the 4-4-2. We switched to kind of the 4-2-4 this year to kind of make it fit with the current players. I, I think ultimately... This summer is about adding one or two, maybe three players of really, really good quality. But, you know, between some of the players we've got coming in and we have coming up through our ranks, I'm not too worried. Of course, Luke Rumble, uh, I mentioned before, he was in the England youth team setup. He didn't actually play for them. He's a good player. I am a little concerned that we've overpaid for him, but I'm not going to overreact just yet because, I mean, a lot of it depends on his potential. And ultimately, e even if I couldn't do a great deal with him, I don't see a world in which we sell him for a loss. You know, with Brexit hap having happened in game, British players do cost more for, you know, top teams. They are willing to pay more. It's that premium that teams are expected to play uh, to pay. Um, one other signing I've actually made, worth noting, Kai Harris, camped at Welsh under-19s. I found him playing in the under-19s. He was playing for Seven Druids, who I think are like an amateur club. He was on an amateur deal. That's all that really matters. He was on an amateur deal, wasn't getting paid to play for them. Zero compensation required. We've snapped him up. So another, another good young player for the future, I suppose, that's going to be worth keeping an eye on. Anyway, um, I'm just thinking of what else there is to talk about, really. I, I could tell you how I'm going to, you know, totally rebuild the team. But I'm, I'm not going to. <laughs> um, it's just been, it's been a good first year. 
I feel comfortable. I would love to know where you would be changing things. What players have stood out to you who's been a bit disappointing? Um, if players do have crazy offers made on them, perhaps I need to look to sell them on. You know, that is something that I am somewhat open to. I'm a bit confused as to why Forza Kaski has such a high value of 1.5 million. I can only assume that that is reputation related because of the level that he's played at previously. Given the fact he only played four games this year, albeit he did get three assists in them, maybe a player I'd be open to selling to help finance the club a little bit. We've got £1.5 million in the bank, so money isn't really a problem. You can see here we are actually slightly over the wage budget, but we could just rejig. There we go. Problem solved. We've got 800 k to spend. Plenty of money. I feel cautiously optimistic about this upcoming season. But anyway, I feel like I'm umming and ahhing a lot here because there isn't a great deal to talk about because of the nature of this first season. I think we'll come back for the start of next year, hopefully feeling rejuvenated and refreshed. Try and put this result to the back of our mind. There may be a new system on the cards as well, which could be exciting. And of course, the one crumb of comfort I have, the one thing keeping me going through all of this is knowing the next season we get to take on Boston United. That that in itself gives me a little bit to be excited about, even if I am disappointed with how the match went today. But anyway, folks, that's going to wrap up everything for me from this video. I hope you have enjoyed. Do drop a like on it if you have enjoyed. If you've got any words of wisdom, words of encouragement for me off the back of that playoff loss, I'd love to see them down in the comments. And well, until next time, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.